<laughs> it is with heavy hearts that we say our earthly goodbyes to one of the most incredible men I have ever met, Louis Tenka. He has played a variety of roles in the lives of men, a devoted husband, a deeply loved and respected father, an adored Opa, a wise brother, a hard-working son, and a would-do-anything-for-you kind of friend. My name is Janelle Tenhout, and I am the second of his two granddaughters. Lou was born on the 5th of November in 1934 in the Netherlands to Rolf and Angie Tenhout. He had six siblings, Claus, Don, Frank, Teresa, John, and Audrey. Frank passed away many years ago, but the rest are still doing well over in Alberta and Ontario. Lou attended school in the Netherlands and at the age of 14 immigrated to Ontario, Canada with his family in 1949. He had a variety of jobs in Thunder Bay over the years, but found a passion for driving milk trucks for Kellogg's Dairy. He did this for many years, along with his best friend and brother-in-law, Menno. He met my oma, Avis, through a mutual friend, and married her shortly thereafter, at the young age of 23. After a few years together, they had their first son, Ralph. A job opportunity arose for Lou in British Columbia, so he moved his family here to Nanaimo. This is where they had their second son and my father, Earl. Opa continued to work in the milk industry for quite some time and often spoke highly of his experiences. And then Smurf is going to... Sorry. He's <laughs> 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 going to speak of his other work experiences. <clears throat> Don't read this part. Smurf speaks another word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta deal. <clears throat> this isn't gonna be as easy as I thought. <laughs> I'd love this man from the moment. Oh, that's that's yours. Where am I? You gotta read your oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um I was very fortunate enough that uh, I started a job with Ralph years and years ago, where Avis and Lou opened up their house and took me in, and uh, raised me as one of their own for a few years while we we slaved and we worked away. Um, Lou was an incredible man. He could make anybody feel as if they were part of the family in an immediate say, sense of a few words. And, uh, we spent all our time together, as you can tell, Medan and Tony plays a really big part in everything uh, for a lot of people in this room as well. And growing up at the house, we were, we were um, rambunctious would be a good word for it. As we all lived together, worked together, James, Ralph and myself were three roommates for years and years, eating all of Davis' cooking, trying to eat blue out of house and home, and working in the shop. When it came around time for work, nobody could hold a candle to Lou. He would work all day at his job in the city, whether it be down working in the graveyard, plowing snow in the winter, driving a garbage truck, whatever they had him doing in the city, Lou was always, always working. It was often said to, uh, to us that, you know, he'll slow down later. Later never really came. Lou worked diligently forever. And some of his biggest accomplishments, um, of course, were the pride that he has in his sons, uh, Ralph and Earl. And of course, for Avis, who took care of me many, 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 many years. And still does to this day, as I still hear words that Lou said to me repeatedly over and over again. Things like, it's not going to come easy, you got to work. And that shows in direct reflection of the way that this company has come together. And as you can tell, everybody in this room, he knew a lot of people. There was a lot of talk that it was going to be uh, not much of a turnout, but we all knew it was going to be a full house as soon as we mentioned it. As everybody wanted to come to this today to pay respects to a great man. Through his years, <clears throat> after retirement, traveling down south and getting good out of Palm Springs, taking the motor home, and him and Avis would leave for six months at a time. Where he got down to Palm Springs only to start his winter job, where he was the maintenance man in the park where they lived, 
and he would wake up in the morning and be up with a chainsaw in his hands, working away, cutting down trees where young people wouldn't dare get up. Who knew there was a job to do, he would just get it done. Driving back and forth from there, that was nothing for Luke. That was a short little bunny hop going down to Palm Springs and turning around and coming back up. And getting home, not even unpacking and figuring out what else he had to do, and back to work he would go. It's been a, it's been a pretty crushing blow losing him. And he, uh, he was, of course, as everybody has said, he was Lou, Louie, Lodabite, those new notebooks. Um, but to a lot of us, James included, he was just dad. And to all the guys in the company, he was dad. There was, there was no Lou. It was just dad. And it was real simple that way. A lot of love is shown and a lot of love is given by him. And it's going to be a long time to me to get over this one. And thank you for listening. And uh, real quick ending. About 18 years ago, my father passed away. And I spoke at his funeral. And at the end of it, Lou came up to me and said, You understand, when my time comes, I'm not, I'm, my sons don't have the way of speaking that you do. And he said, Tell you the truth, Ken, you're probably going to end up giving my eulogy at my funeral. Well, I'd like to say to Lou, I just pictured looking at me from back there. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. Love you. I have loved this man from the moment I stepped foot onto this earth. I looked up to him in nearly every aspect and strived to follow in his footsteps. He instilled a deep appreciation for our heritage, and I am forever thankful. This man was Dutch, and he would always be sure that that was known. I also quickly adopted his love of plants, golfing, and nature walks, as these were the things I fondly remember doing with him. He lived with such passion, and this was apparent in all of his actions. He passed down so many incredible qualities to his sons, Earl and Ralph, and to his granddaughters, my sister Jalen and I. I can remember going on walks with him where he taught me to stomp on wooden bridges to scare away the bears, so I would always be safe when I was out for a stroll. I tried my hardest to move my little legs to keep up with him. He was strong and he was fast until his very last days. He taught us all so much, but not always in the most conventional ways. Sometimes it would be through words or storytelling, this man loved to tell stories, and rightfully so, as he lived a life packed with adventure. Sometimes it was through action, whether that was through building a house with his strong bare hands, or teaching his sons to fish or to drive a boat, or making them figure it out on their own, because that would be the greatest lesson that he could teach them. Opa showed his affection for us in simple ways, and there is no doubt in our minds that that man loved hard with all that he had. Getting an Opa hug was like being wrapped so tightly in the arms of a big burly bear. He couldn't, you couldn't even get out if you wanted to. I cannot express to you the strength that that man had. Sometimes he would even plop a kiss on your cheek if he was feeling extra thankful that day. It came as a shock to all of us when Opa was diagnosed with cancer. This man, this incredible and to my knowledge invincible man, was diagnosed with a disease that takes the lives of so many. I wasn't too concerned at first, after all, he had already beaten it twice before. But this time was different. Opa, an 84-year-old man, became just that, an 84-year-old man. And it was nearly unbearable to watch this brick wall of a human begin to slowly tumble down. He fought a brief and but valiant battle with this disease and passed peacefully on his own time. My family is grieving the loss of Opa, and we feel the empty void he has left behind. The head, the patriarch of our family, is no longer here with us, and we feel his absence in the deepest part of our hearts. But thankfully, this isn't goodbye. I am thankful that we share the same faith, and I can say with confidence that this isn't the end. I know we will see him again one day, and I know he's still watching over his family and friends. Someday, I will see his smiling face, and I will hear his laugh, and I will feel his tight, bare hug squeeze again. I am sure of it. Until then, we will wrap Alma in the love that you provided for her in the 62 years you were married. We will continue to look at photos and remember the time we had with you. And we will talk to you and seek your guidance when we need it and look for you in the sunrises and the sunsets when we miss you terribly. 
We will keep your memory alive and never, ever forget you. You, Opa, were the strongest man we have ever known, and we will continue to keep our heads held high for you. My goodness, do we love you. We love you so much. I'm going to read a poem that we found that we found, thought was really fitting. It's called, If Tomorrow Starts Without Me. If tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not here to see, if the sun should rise and you find your eyes filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today, while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me, as much as I love you, and each time you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand and said my place was ready in heaven, far above, and that I had to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye. For all of my life, I've always, I'd always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for, so much left yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the time we had to share, the time we shared and all the fun we had. If I couldn't relive yesterday, just even for a while, I would say goodbye and kiss you and maybe even see you smile. But I fully realized that this could never be, for emptiness and memories would take the place of me. When I thought of worldly, worldly things, I might miss come, I might miss come tomorrow. Um, I thought of you and when I did, my heart was filled with sorrow. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home. When God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne, he said, this is eternity and all I promise you. Today, your life on earth is past and here life starts anew. I promise no tomorrow and today will always last. And since each day is the same way, there's no longing for the past. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right here in your heart.